let expressions are like let definitions, except that they are syntactically expressions. So you can nest them as sub-expressions of bigger expressions. For example, we could say let a equals zero in a. So this differs from what we've seen before. Before we didn't have the in and then something else following it as a piece of syntax when we were doing definitions. It's that in keyword that is making this a let expression as opposed to a let definition. So if I say let a equal, a equal zero in a, that evaluates to zero. The way to think about that is OCaml is binding the value zero to the name a and then continuing on and saying in the rest of this. So what's the rest of it? It's just a here and a evaluates to zero because that's the binding that occurred. We could do more complicated kinds of let expressions, of course. So we could say let b equal one in two times b, for example. What do we think we're going to get there? Two is what I hope, and we do. What happened there? One was bound to the name b, and then evaluation continued by evaluating two times b. Well, what's two times b? It's two times one, because b is currently bound to one. And two times one is two. So what you can think of this as is a kind of substitution even, right? So if we bind one to B, then whenever we see B later on, we can substitute one for that name B and continue with evaluation that way. All right. Now, um, these let expressions are not definitions. And let me prove that to you. A is not currently bound to anything. So even though I did that first let expression up there, let a equals zero in a, that in there is actually trying to say something important, that little preposition there. a is equal to zero in that following sub-expression, but not elsewhere. So this is giving us an ex a notion of scope, as you might have encountered in other languages before. a is not bound outside, b is not bound outside, and so forth. We can nest these arbitrarily. You could say let c equal 3 and let d equal 4 in c plus d. So let's stop to think about what we expect to happen here. c is going to be bound to 3. Then d is going to be bound to 4. And then we'll evaluate c plus d. Well, that's going to be 3 plus 4. So this whole thing should evaluate to 7. And that is indeed what happens. And let's try one other thing. Let e equal 5 in, let e equal 6 in e. Now, what do you think is going to happen there? Actually, it's a little hard to predict off the top of your head. I imagine there's a bunch of possibilities going through it. Turns out the answer is 6, and we get a warning as well. It might even look like some sort of mutation of variables is occurring here, and I told you that doesn't happen. Well, there is a very logical explanation to what's happening, but we're going to need to study the syntax and semantics first in order to understand it.